Hello, my name's Dave and this is Stan Dave Adventures. Uh, today we're up in the Quahana Wilderness on a day hike. And uh, kind of at Beaver Run Reservoir. And uh, today what we're doing is we're going to go see if uh, we can spot some beaver. There's a big dam that's been there for the last two years. They've been building and uh, they <laughs> almost got a bridge underwater completely. So they got the water up a good like four feet, which is pretty impressive. So hopefully I can get some video and pictures of that. Um, we'll see, uh, hopefully maybe see some bears, some, some elk, some rattlesnakes. Um, there is a bunch of birds here, but I kind of spooked them all. A couple cranes and uh, I think a red tail hawk, maybe a white tail, I'm not sure. But yeah, so uh, I also brought my native rookie stuff. So I'm gonna try to catch some native rookie down there. And then, uh, yeah, if there are no native rookies there, we'll uh, travel someplace a little bit later. And I'd like to show you guys my new setup and uh, show you a picture of uh, some video of some of the native Pennsylvania rookie. So uh, let's get this on the road. Well, there's the beaver dam. I don't see much commotion. It's a hot day and they might be chilling. They might be working, but uh, you know, they got the bridge pretty much completely underwater there. 
Um, two years ago, this was all this was all dry. There was no water here. And they really built that thing up. That's for sure. Well, I'm gonna see if I can get out on the bridge and do some fishing from the bridge, but maybe not. Well, we made it down to the, the beaver den. Um, it's kind of late afternoon and I, I figured it's probably best to come early morning or late evening. Um, but this is when I had the opportunity. There's no mossy rocks on the way down here. It's, it was a pretty short jaunt. Um, I, got, uh, I got pretty overstimulated for that one mile. It's been, a, it's been like about a, I don't know, five weeks since I've been in the, in the woods. And um, it's uh, man, I got I got super super stimulated by it. Um, it's pretty wild. I don't know if, if anyone else experiences that. Just the just being on the being in the woods, you know, it's all my senses all get fired up and. So I didn't see nobody. Um, the trail's kind of getting, um, the grass is getting high. I'm all, I'm all worked up about some rattlesnakes too. You know, I'm watching my step, taking my time. Um, I, I have yet to see one in this area and it's one of the better places in the country to see rattlesnakes on the East Coast anyways. There's tons of them here, but I never get to see them. So. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's nice to get out. The bridge is feeling a little crooked today, a little wobbly. But yeah, it's, I got some good pictures, got some good light. And uh, yeah, so let me um, oh, that tastes so good. So. Let me show you my fishing rod. Um, so I made this. This is a carbon fiber tube. It's a piece of a. It's a helicopter part. Um, and this is it come out to be the perfect size. And then I bought these uh, <coughs> caps for it. And um, so this is a this spinning spinning rod. I wanted to go to Tinkara, but most of the places that I'm going to need are brookie fish. Uh, um, you know, you got a lot of mountain laurel and it just, uh, but it's, uh, it's a Japanese rod and a handmade Japanese rod. And um, it only weighs two ounces. I'll have my backpack and fishing setup will be about a pound and two ounces, and that'll be with uh, two rods, two Tinkara rod. I mean, one Tinkara rod, this, and then all the stuff I need for it. But um, yeah, I'll have to get some video of it here and show you. But it's a, a five footer. It's ultra light. Um, comes in uh, like I said, there's four pieces, and uh, it's it's the only one I could find and. He only makes these rods every three years or so because um, they're handmade so they do batches of different rods and um, so uh, he just released these in another year and a half you won't be able to find them or you're going to pay um, triple the price. Uh, it's not a cheap rod but um, This is pretty sure this is a bow light. Um, 
Not very good to eat. I don't think you can eat it at all. <laughs> so we're just about back at the car. Um, might stop and eat lunch. We'll see what's up. Well, we, uh, we're back at the car. So we're going to head about, that, about a mile down the road. Um, eat some uh, quick lunch and uh, catch a uh, fish. Hopefully catch a fish. I'm pretty confident. Um, we'll see. It's, again, it's not the best time of the day for that, but well, let's get a move on. So we made it down to the next spot. Um, kind of hungry. We're down at uh, Medics Run Road. Um, a few years ago, the state put a bunch of um, roadside camping down here. There's no one here, so they got some picnic tables. Um, I'm going to eat uh, Caribbean smoked chicken with dirty rice and cabbage. It's uh, from Trail Magic. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this cooking up. And then uh, we'll go do some fishing and hopefully catch a trout. Um, the water's low and clear. But uh, I think I can manage. So we'll see how that goes. So a lot of folks say that this uh, pocket rocket's too loud. Um, I don't know. I can barely hear it. Now, if you crank this up, you're just wasting fuel at this point. You want to go down to where it's like, um, you know, are hardly any sound. These things are meant to get down to a little bit of uh, colder temperatures. So uh, you don't need all that um, pressure. And, uh summertime or any other time really except for much of the winter and then you know then it's going to sound like this in the winter time whenever you have a crank the full way up so i figured i'd show you the rod while the uh food's dehydrating uh it's a um, japanese rod 10 um 10 ryu and it's a raise integral which is their handmade rods um, even the carbon fiber is hand spun and it's hand spun over fiberglass. So this is, a, um, this is a solid rod. It doesn't, it's not a tube, um, but they do wrap the, uh, carbon fiber around it. And, um, it's, it's a beautiful rod. They only make them every three years. And, uh, so it's perfect for backpacking though. Like I said, it weighs two ounces and, uh, and I have it equipped with, um, this, this is an old uh, Stratic C14 Shimano reel. I've had this for, I don't know, probably 10 years. Um, I, think it's, I think it's 10 years old this year it came out. And, um, yeah, I'm geeked about having to, being able to fish when I find, like, them little brookie streams. So the, uh, <laughs> lunch is done. And, um, I mean, you show you, look at that there. Wow. It's um, it's trail magic. You see, it's down. I'm so good. 
got it's got a nice kick to it might be a little hot to be eating a hot lunch but it's, um, I have to use these up I bought way too many of them I haven't been getting out like I thought I was hmm. So I, uh, I caught my first trout here. First uh, rookie. And these barbless hooks, they come right out. I don't know if you can see that guy. That's a, it's a Pennsylvania rookie. I'm gonna keep your hands wet while handling them, guys. I'm gonna uh, see if I can catch another one in this spot. Pretty geek. It's the, <laughs> the first shot I caught in a while. Chris and the new rod. So, uh, yeah, we'll try to get another one. Show you how pretty this guy is. Get him right back in the water. So, um, heading back home. Thank you guys for coming along. Like and subscribe. Um, I'll get another backpacking trip in here shortly. Uh, this was just uh, spending the day up in the Quahanna Wild, and uh, I needed to get through the woods, um, even if it wasn't for overnight. But I did catch uh, a whole bunch of brook trout. I think I got a couple of good videos for you. And uh, yeah, but uh, like, subscribe, and um, we'll see you guys on the go around.